The Oklahoma gubernatorial race is really fascinating because it is unusually competitive and something just happened, a viral moment that I think is going to assist the Democrat here even further, Joy Hoffmeister. Now, she, during a debate, is going to drop a fact on Governor Kevin Stitt, and as you're going to see, He's going to be completely incredulous and refuse to believe it. But as you're going to see when we come back here, what she's saying is completely factual. Let's watch. So let's talk about the facts. The fact is the rates of violent crime are higher in Oklahoma under true. your watch than it's in New true. York and California. That's a fact. Well, we'll have that oh fact checked gosh. by the frontier <laughs> superintendent. It's also a fact that medical Hang on, marijuana... Oklahomans, do you believe we have higher crime than New York or California? That's what she just said. Safety and security is my top priority, and it will be as governor. The look on his face there was sheer panic because he didn't know how to respond. He just had to say, that's not true. Do you believe that? Well, I mean, whether or not people believe it, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not true. And unfortunately for him, it is true. What she said was absolutely factual. As Yahoo News reports, John Roman, a senior fellow at NORC at the University of Chicago, told Yahoo News that Hoffmeister's numbers were accurate. Citing FBI data, Roman said that Oklahoma is 12th in violence per 100,000 residents and 7th in property crime per 100,000 residents. California is similar but lower for each, and New York is much safer and below the national averages in both property and violence. Overall, putting violent crime rates and property rates together, Oklahoma is on the list of the top 10 highest crime rate states. Roman noted that the national incident-based reporting system now being used by the FBI is new and that California and New York only provided estimates for 2021, which were factored in the data. However, Roman added that the old system prior to 2021 shows the same general trend in recent years. California and Oklahoma are similar, with Oklahoma a little higher on property crimes and New York much lower on both. Now, that last paragraph there is important because that is the basis for Stitt's team to reject this data, saying, oh, well, you know, these are just estimates and the data's incomplete. Yeah, but the trend was the same before 2021, so you still are wrong. So you've got to take the L, but they won't take the L. And that's because this makes Kevin Stitt look very bad. So if you look at some of his campaign ads, and we're not going to get to them, but overall, his campaign ads are, Oklahoma was in a really bad place, then I became the governor, and everything is so much better. We no longer have this budget crisis. I increased the pay of cops and teachers, which is something that he brags about, which is pretty uh, surprising for a Republican. And so he wants to make it seem as if everything is copacetic in the state right now. So this doesn't bode well for that narrative. Now, in the event Hoffmeister were the incumbent and Stitt was the challenger here, would he be bringing up this statistic? Absolutely. He'd be running as this tough on crime Republican because this is what they do. The problem is that whether or not they promote a tough on crime message is going to hinge on their position and whether or not it politically benefits them, regardless of the actual data within their state, right? Now, in that video, it seems like Hoffmeister was more tough on crime than Stitt, but she doesn't really have a platform that leads me to believe that she is going to be one of these tough on crime sort of centrist Democrats. But if you go to Stitt's page, what's really interesting is that he isn't running on being tough on crime. Rather, he's claiming that he is smart on crime. He actually brags about commuting the sentences of nonviolent drug offenders and increased funding for treatment to decrease the recidivism rate for low-level drug offenders too. And he's done other things with regard to criminal justice reform that are objectively good that I think that he should brag about. But if you were to flip this, if a Democrat listed those things on their platform saying that they're smart on crime rather than being tough on crime and they're commuting the sentences of low-level drug offenses, then we all know what the narrative would be. You want to let criminals out, yada, yada, yada. But because it's a Republican here, even if crime rates are high, well, that's not the narrative. So Republicans will only run as being tough on crime and fear monger about the crime rate if they can get some political points for it. And they do that because, like it or not, it is a smart strategy because it works. Hysteria and fear mongering over crime uh, has been a consistent galvanizer for 
independents in particular, but especially Republicans. And even, you know, it, it helps win over some normie Democrats, more suburban Democratic voters. So that's why they do it. But just understand that if a Republican is talking about being tough on crime, you know, you should really look at the data because odds are they're not telling you the full story, right? They're showing you some anecdotes, but that doesn't necessarily represent the macro of what's happening in that said state. Now, I don't want to give you this picture that Stitt is some sort of a moderate because he is by no means a moderate, despite bragging about teacher pay and some criminal justice reform. This individual is a far-right extremist. In fact, he signed one of the most harshest, if not the harshest, abortion bans into law with absolutely no exceptions for rape or incest. But there are apparently exceptions for the life of the mother, or if a fetus is not viable, then they can apparently remove that via abortion, although there's a lot of legal gray area there, and as we've seen with other states, that doesn't necessarily make doctors feel any safer about doing the procedure needed to you know, evacuate a fetus if it's not viable because they don't want to be prosecuted. Um, either way, this is a really fascinating race because it's competitive, as I mentioned at the start of this video, and if you look at public opinion polls on average, they are neck and neck. So Stitt is leading by an average of just one point, and Hoffmeister is leading according to some polls, but on average, they are statistically tied, and this could go either way in the state of Oklahoma. So really fascinating dynamic here. Oklahoma wasn't necessarily a state that I thought would be interesting to watch, but either way here, what's unfolding is unusual. And it just goes to show you that when it comes to these tough on crime Republicans, they're only going to trot out that message if it is politically beneficial. But if their state that they're in control of is particularly high when it comes to crime, they're not going to bring that up. They're just going to talk about different issues. So you kind of know when they're going to use this if it works for them. And in this instance, it doesn't work for Kevin Stitt. In fact, it'd be horrible for him to bring up the crime rates in the state of Oklahoma because he's the one in charge, right? But if he were the challenger, again, he would absolutely be putting that front and center. So either way, pretty interesting. Republicans are fake. Who knew?